Good morning, Reefers. I'm Daniel, and today I'm talking about the refugiums again. I cleaned them out yesterday, and I couldn't believe what I found inside. Hi, little puppy. What's up, Griffin? I'll take you out in a minute. You gotta wait. Um, so anyway, what I found when I was cleaning out, not only does each tank, like I said, have a different ecosystem and different things living in it, but this was filled with, um, I want to say, uh, tons of shrimp, copepods, and I'm drawing a freaking brank here, so I'm looking for it. Oh my gosh, I need to put gloves on. Yeah, you don't do this stuff. All right, safety first. I had to put a glove on before I touched this. One of the reasons why um, I recommend putting a glove on is because in your tank, you may not want these and you may remove them, but the bristle worms actually do a really good job cleaning up. And there's tons of them in here. There's one right there. I don't want to like really go through and touch this as much as I have to, but I saw a whole bunch of bristle worms in there. There's another one. These things hurt. If you touch them, it feels like fiberglass. So you do not want to touch them. That is bad. No bueno. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And this is all the nasty stuff that I pulled out of the other sump. So over here, you can see that I did indeed clean it. Um, I just did a quick scraping off the front of the glass and sucked out anything that was a mess. Now there is virtually no flow down here, so there is a, a problem with that and it does collect plenty of detritus. So I did just like I said, a quick siphon it out just to help remove some of it. Now I don't have any starfish down here yet and this ecosystem is still developing, so you'll see a lot of feather dusters. I don't know if you guys can see down here. Tons of little shrimpies are swimming around. So, I didn't want to clean it too well. Like I said, I didn't want to remove the ecosystem completely. So a lot of the algae will regrow, but what I try to do is take out some of that nasty stuff and replace it with the chato. I want that to grow, and I'm hoping it will, but we'll find out. This light is on 24 hours a day, um, so I do feel bad for that fish. He does have to hide and put himself to sleep pretty much. Um, I don't know what that does to him having those lights on all the time, but it may drive him crazy. So, and then this tank over here, this refugium, I cleaned it out and just put in, like I said, balls of the chato. Um, and this one, I can actually control the speed of the flow through that valve right there. So whatever water I want to go in there, it flows across um, the top. So like I said, everything has its problems. The water flows across the top. Um, sometimes water underneath will get stagnant or the algae will grow so thick on top that it blocks off the bottom and then whatever algae's underneath will die off. So that's why you have to keep pulling out the algae um, each month and just checking on it because it'll grow out of hand and then it'll die and but also the amount of detritus that I pulled out um, was unbelievable. If you were just take a handful of this stuff and just rinse it out, the shrimp, the dust, everything that comes off of it, it it's disgusting. I shouldn't have left this out here because it already stinks already. Um, I wanted to do a video and I, I you know, <laughs> it just got away from me. But this stuff is gross. That's why I'm gonna pull it out, trash it, and then start fresh, everything will regrow. Um, I'll change my carbon probably and my GFO today just to give it a, a quick fresh um, jump start on the system. So I, I do that every once in a while. Um, I will be doing a water change too today on the system so I try to incorporate everything in, in a timely manner so I don't have any issues there. But yeah, what else did I want to say to you guys? I don't know. I'm trying to think. There's something I wanted to tell you. Water flow in the sump, different ecosystems, um, lighting to grow, Calorpa. Um, I'm trying to see. I'll have to look up the name for the kind of the tangs eat. But 
this isn't the kind. They don't like to eat that stuff. But they will pick out of this one. You can see how there's a different type of macroalgae inside, and it's kind of intertwined with the chato. Um, that can actually outcompete it and outgrow, which is one of the reasons why I get frustrated with it. So as I saw with this sump over here, the refugium, all since there's no fish in there, there was nothing eating it, it just completely overgrew and overturned the um, chato. So I throw that in there with the fish, usually, and they'll pick it out and clean it up. And then once it's nice spotless, you know, then I'll use it in the refugium or sell it. But you can see a ball before the fish got to it. You see all that nuisance algae. Even though, like I said, it's not really a nuisance if you got tanks, because they will eat that. Um, but all kinds of stuff grows in here. And it's nice, it's a little bit of current. It tumbles. You can see there's a feather duster in this one. But it's just, it's a great way for nutrient export, and it's a great way to keep extra food in your tank for the fish, because it'll blow through the system, go pumped up through the return, and then <coughs> it'll help feed the corals <coughs> at nighttime and different things. <coughs> Oh yeah, one more thing I did was throw in this, these two sea urchins over here. Now they will help keep the glass and floor clean and they'll be moving around. So like I said, since there's not flow and there's not really any fish in here and there's no starfish, this ecosystem is, pr is pretty deprived. So that's why you see all the red algae taking over and you know, it's nice to know what causes what. So, all right guys, I think I said enough for today. As always, thanks for watching, happy reefing, until next time.